I think it's a really exciting time to be an educator now. And what we're seeing is a totally new landscape where it's not just a shift, but it's a complete transformation in what's possible. And if we truly want to transform what's possible into what's probable, then it's time to start looking at things quite differently. An example of this can be seen with great athletes in athletics. If you think of a basketball player shooting hoops, what they can see is just the rim of the basket. They can't see from a perspective that allows them to see the target that they're aiming for. When you focus on what you can just see, what you can measure, the height of that basketball net, then it's really hard to understand where the target is and what you're really aiming for. I think that's an issue that we're faced with in education today. What we're seeing is people thinking about broken schools, failing schools, and measuring the things that they can see in their perspective. And we're not allowing ourselves to truly look for the targets that we want to hit. And so if we want to move from a position of thinking about what's possible and making it probable, we kind of have to let go of the negative pieces and focus on the targets that we really, really want. If you accept the expectations of others, especially negative ones, then you never will change the outcome. Michael Jordan Let's change our language. Education is not wrong. Broken. Let's change our language. Not broken. Education is transforming. Before, in non-digital, non-tech using classes, the teacher tended to differentiate the learning for students. And now, with digital, social, and collaborative tools, the students tend to differentiate the learning for themselves. Before, students wrote for their teachers. Now, students can write for the world. Before, we studied out of textbooks. Now, we create our own. Before, digital learning borrowed from a data worldview. Now, digital learning borrows from a human interactivity worldview. Before, I learned in a staff with 70 others. And now, I learn in a PLN pool with thousands of others. Before, we looked at outdated and misproportioned maps that roll down in front of a blackboard. Now, we can explore the world through Google Earth and watch the world as it is moving and changing. Before, kids would bring an apple to the teacher. Now, students bring apple to the classroom. Before, desks, copy books, papers, pencils, chalk dust. Now, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, iPad, iPhone, share, like, tweet, dig, and so forth. What language do we use? Struggling or striving. Failing or evolving. Broken or transforming. What guides us? Frustration or passion. Let's transform education. Hi, I'm Dave Truss, and although you're watching this near the start of the video, this is actually the last clip being filmed. All along, I've had just two learning intentions. The first one is for us to think about the language that we use, and for us to reframe the way we talk about education so that we're moving it in a positive direction. The second one is to take action. What you've seen so far, along with the general tone of this presentation will exemplify the first intention. The second one 
has changed a bit. You see, I want you to take action, and I'm going to share a website to help with that. But this presentation has been a bit of a puzzle. Not a traditional puzzle, rather, one where the outcome has transformed by the process itself. It had to be that way, because ultimately, by asking you to take action, what I'm really asking you is to become a connected educator and a new landscape for teaching and learning. To do that, I wanted to demonstrate my point, and so I asked my personal learning network to help me. What you'll see now is a story of a connected learner told by the people I'm connected to. Enjoy. These things I know. I'm one big derivative, and to be honest, I'm not really going to share anything new. That's really tough to do. In a world of limited resources, we are embarking on a journey of providing customized learning for our students. Because we know that it isn't traveling on the educational rails, but the amazing side trips we take along the way that really matter. How do I know this? Because I'm a connected learner. Dean Shuresky, K-12 Online Conference Keynote, 2010. I'm a giant derivative. I won't pretend that I'm going to share something new and original. That's really hard. Kim Cofino, K-12 Online Conference Keynote, 2009. Today's educational system where we find ourselves limited by the physical availability of teachers, classroom space, and resources, we should be striving to provide personalized learning experiences for each individual student. David Warlick, K-12 Online Conference Keynote, 2006. The rail is not the central part. It's not the foundation of what kids need to be learning today. The foundation of what kids need to be learning should be those side trips. I wrote a blog post about David's keynote, and I have referred to that keynote and my blog post time and again over the past five years. We can never know the totality of our influence in the world or what conversations happen in response to our work. Bud Hunt Uh, I think that one of the best ways to start is actually with face-to-face -face connections and finding someone you know who knows a little bit more than you and engaging with them. Start small. Start with your staff. Go to a staff meeting. Present some ideas. Write about it on your blog. Um, be an example for others. Be approachable. Take the risk out of it. Take the fear out of it for people and create opportunities for people to share. Share themselves. Share their ideas and share, share everything that they have to give. If you're isolated, you're, if you're self-sufficient, generally that leads to poverty, whether it's poverty of thought, poverty in, in financial ways, or whatever, because you can only do so much on your own. So connecting is essential today, and that's what drives prosperity, drives uh, new ideas, uh, new inventions that no one ever imagined because they couldn't imagine on their own. We have been defining learning according to what is to be learned, while what learners in fact want is not to learn per se, but rather to do. Stephen Downs If you ask an interesting question, you get an interesting answer. The future of education requires, more than anything else, the involvement and the engagement of students. If you look back, like, 50 years, you were sitting in a desk and listening to your teacher and didn't really have a voice, and yeah. even now, it's a lot, I think, more about students yeah. and the teacher. Be open-minded to what other people would like to try out. But the most important thing of all to lead is to listen to the kids. I believe that we need to create a positive culture that's flexible in schools where things are student-centered and the teachers have the ability to customize learning for students. I'm going to say one thing, I want to see the teacher become the facilitator. Leading by example and that we really have to model what we're asking teachers and students to do. Students have the capability to teach others, including teachers, and I think um, most teachers find that every day that they learn something new along with the students who learn something new. There is an abundance of information. How can you know everything? Teachers and students need to be learning together. To teach is to model and demonstrate. To learn is to practice and reflect. Stephen Downs. Some of the most significant leadership that I've seen recently 
is coming from inside classrooms from teachers. Some of the most impressive leadership I've seen at the administrative level have been administrators who have known how to support and then also get out of the way of their teacher leaders. I think moving from knowing what I want to do to actually doing it takes support. It takes someone who knows what they're doing, who can answer my questions, because otherwise I get to a point where I'm not sure how to go ahead and it's too easy to stop. I know that there are pockets of innovation everywhere in our schools and I feel like more educators are starting to connect and share with one another and I feel like the more we do that, the more we connect with one another, uh, the stronger system we're going to be able to create together. Be very selfless, be helpful, uh, it's not all about you and you'll find that this is a case of the more you give away, the more you get back. Whether you are in a classroom, if you are a parent at home, if you are an administrator in a building, leadership happens at every level. It doesn't matter if you are engaging in change of language, change in a school, or change in individual practice. The most challenging action is providing leadership. The fact is, that by default, if you're an educator, you are a leader, and it's your choice as to how you go about representing that. When everyone is talking about leadership, including being a leader of change, we're talking about turning values into reality. One idea I think is worth exploring and is one that I've been trying to use lately is the idea of becoming a narrative champion. So as a leader, finding those stories, telling those stories, uh, I think is the best way or one of the best ways to help change and transform your situation. This is a tale of Teacher A and Teacher B. Or maybe it's a story about their students. Meet Sally. Sally is in Teacher A's class. She's a student that always hands in exceptional work. There she is, getting back yet another great report from her teacher. Teacher A was proud of the work Sally did, and he really enjoyed reading it. Here's Sam. Sam is in Teacher B's class. He actually doesn't like to write, but something has changed recently. Sam began working on a report on his blog, and Teacher B noticed that he started to edit more carefully before publishing. Sam paid more attention to feedback from his teacher, his peers, and from other people who read his work. And Sam even went back and edited his work after it was handed in. Teacher B was proud of the work Sam did, and he really enjoyed reading it. Teacher A asked for student feedback after the report was done, and the students shared that the peer editing was a waste of time. They found that the feedback wasn't really helpful, and it was hard to do. Teacher B asked for feedback online, and one of the students said this, I thought it was a great project because it was always fun, and when you needed inspiration, it was easy to just click on someone else's page and see all the neat stuff that they've done. And then it makes you want to make your work just as good. This was a tale of Teacher A and Teacher B. Or maybe it was more a story about their students. Nice story. Do I know the teachers? As a matter of fact, you do. They're actually both me, just at different times in my career. sees it. Chris Lehman.
my pie in the sky is that you know, educators will look outside of their own domain more often and connect with others and bring that rich resource that is the world into their classrooms so their students can benefit. Um, we're starting to bring the community into the school. We're, we're sort of like we're, the community is part of the fabric of their education. We're, we're going into global education by connecting with other schools and, and experts and people online. Today there are many people who still think of the internet as a tool that isolates us when in actual fact what it does is extend our reach. Ten years ago, if I didn't know the answer to something, I probably didn't go to an encyclopedia and I left that question unanswered. Five years ago, I would go and ask Google. Just recently, I came to the realization that I now ask my network more questions than I ask Google. And what I find is that the answers that I get are richer and more meaningful to me. I have this network that, that functions as my information concierge. I can go, I can ask it a question, and I get back an answer that has more relevance and more meaning to me. I think that that is something that we need to have for our children, that we need them to understand, and we need to understand that first. Make connections. Those connections are what invigorate um, students, they invigorate the community, they invigorate teachers as well. I think our job is definitely to engage others in our learning and engage in other people's learning, whether that's the teacher next door, down the hall, in the gym, uh, in the music classroom, or online somewhere. Ultimately, uh, I think what we needed to end up with is something a lot more fluid. Um, I go to blended instruction as being sort of a framework for that thinking, but it's really only part of the equation. Uh, I like to really refer more broadly to the blurring of lines between living and learning. A car is not merely a faster horse. An email is not a faster fax. Play a new game, not the older game, but faster. Seth Godin. In teaching and learning in new ways, um, I would suggest to focus on the why and the what. Then the how and the actual tools you use will happen by common sense. It's not the tool, but how you use it that matters. David Truss on Paradigms. We have to find ways to support teaching and learning with the effective use of technology. Or different, use different language, how does technology support effective pedagogy is really what we should be looking at. We live in a moment of history where change is so speeded up that we begin to see the present only when it is already disappearing. R.D. Lane. I mentioned that one of the goals of this presentation was that you would take action. And I'd like to offer four possible ways to do that. You can explore, engage, connect, and lead. To encourage and hopefully inspire you to take action, I've created a website for this presentation. Think of it as a virtual sandbox where you get to go and play with the ideas and themes shared here. As a final note, I'd like to say a huge thank you to those who contributed to this presentation and also to everyone in my personal learning network. Cheers. First off, I guess I got different questions because my questions are, "What do I want for Christmas?" Uh, <laughs> so, but, but, I, but I can, I can, I, I can ad lib here. Um. When you were 15, 16, you thought there were better things to do than math when it's nice and sunny outside or <laughs> rainy outside if you live in Vancouver. We need to be leaders, and we need to lead the way. Lead, 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 and then lead. Maybe we should lead on top of leading because that might be good to.